everybody and welcome to this video that I have to do ASA Papel because if I don't 10 other booktubers will do a video about it and then I'll have to watch those videos before I could do a response. So some of you might be saying to yourself, self, damn it. Some of you, most of you, even you, might be thinking, what the fuck am I talking about? Well, if you saw the title of the video and are here because you saw the title, then you already know, so quit asking stupid questions. But if you didn't, okay, you're here to hear what I have to say about kids not reading. And kids can't read, won't read something, read, won't play woodwind instruments with reeds, all sorts of stuff, okay? I've had coffee, shut up. Here's the deal. I... <laughs> Okay, this this okay, this is West Coast life right here because Mark at Book Time with Elvis did a video. Sean D. Stanfast did a response video. Um Mark did a part two video that wasn't really a part two video, but ended up being half of a part two video. Um, but also about cigarettes and George Orwell, which sent me on another tirade. And then I went to sleep like a douchebag. And then I wake up and like the sun was like, the sunrise was following all of this. And um, a bunch of motherfuckers did response videos. Josh at Working Man Reads did one. Um, Brian at Bookish did one. Jay Shea did one. Criminali did one. Um, and I'm pretty sure there have been 17 others that I have missed that have fallen through the cracks just like the education of our kids because of the education system and the government and whatever other thing. What I will say is that a lot of people who did these videos all made really good points. I feel like there was a couple things missed, but um, I do want to hit on some of these things real quick. And I knew I was going to be so up my own ass on caffeine that I would forget stuff, so I took notes. Okay, this whole thing started because the um, UK newspaper, The Guardian, did a story about, like, percentages of kids not reading. I think out of all the videos tackling this part of it, like, Brian did a really good job at hitting, like, what the percentages were. But I do want to give Sean some props here too because he's talking about like why do you think that this article came out what do you what do you think the guardian's stance on this was and there's a few different things here one the guardian is wanting to stick it to the tories blame some shit on them and i i believe honestly that's probably the majority of what this whole thing's about the second thing is you got to understand too, and I feel like this whole thing is going to come back around to this. Newspapers are freaking out because every year, and I'm sure COVID did a number on a lot of people, the more people who die who have been reading newspapers, the less places like The Guardian's market share is going to be. In today's world... And the way we consume information, newspapers, and honestly, going to websites that you get like some of an article and then you have to do a paywall and all this other stuff to get the rest of the article, or um, articles that are wordy as fuck just to have enough words on a page so you could see enough ads. Like, this is bullshit. It's all gone. Like, this model is dying a horrible death. And, like, when it all comes crashing down, that's going to be sad. But the thing is, is that all of this shit, like, every other entertainment company type of entertainment has been able to figure out new media. And for some reason, anything to do with print publishing, whether it's newspapers um, books, comic books, any of these things. No one has figured it out. And it's not fucking rocket science. And you're like, oh, if you know all the answers, why don't you? I don't know. I just don't know. But there's a lot of people who have a lot of ideas 
And a lot of those ideas sound really good, and none of these people are even trying it. So <clears throat> that's, a, that's a bitch for another day. So let's keep going. Another thing, too, that I want to hit before I get to this other bit here is that the way the numbers were presented, and again, Bookish did a great job on this, they were presented with the glass half empty approach instead of the glass half full. And whereas like the numbers were like only 15% of children, da, 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 which means 85% of children, da, 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 da. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying here? And that's important because when you say things like that, you're, you're presenting shit in a way that looks horrific and tragic. And some of you might be saying, well, like, that's still a high number, 15, you know, or 13. And um, it is, like, depending on how you're looking at it. But the thing that I think is crucial here is to realize that this is kind of ballpark where that number has been for the last 20 or 30 years. So, like, it it's might have gone up, like, a couple ticks, and Brian made a good point that it's probably COVID and people not having to go to school and being able to sit around and fuck off and do stuff. But the problem with that is the questions that The Guardian asked didn't really hit that. They asked, do you have access to books in your home? Do you personally have a book of your own? And that's not really what... I don't know. The questions were fucking weird. And I understand why they were weird because there was agenda, whatever. But now we're getting into the parents' responsibility. So um, Josh and Jay really laid into this. What I will say... There, there's a couple things here. Yes, it is the parents' responsibility to show a kid how to read in between the ages of one and five. Or show the kid that books are cool and like, ooh, look at this cool thing I got. And doing all this stuff with them. Taking them to the library. Like, letting them know that the library is a place where you could go. And like, I don't know, when I was a kid, there was tons of stuff going on at the library all the time. And um, I know that libraries still do stuff. It's probably not as much as it used to be, especially around this time period. But, you know, whatever. I, th I think this is going to come back to accessibility. But like Josh's video, he was he was getting mad, and um, I completely understand where he's coming from. But not every place is like every other place. Not every city has a library that's open like the same hours that your library is open. I've lived in places where the library was only open for a few hours every day. And when I was working, when I was bartending, they were always open when I was at work. So I couldn't take my kid to that. Um, so, like, that was just, like, not even a, an option. Um, and they weren't open every day. There are some places I've been to, like cities I've been to, where they have multiple libraries. And that's amazing. And some places I've been to where, like they have something that they call a library, but like there's barely anything in it. <sighs> so there's that. But my big beef with this is mainly accessibility because a lot of people are saying like, you can get books anywhere. You could get books on your phone. You can get books here, there, everywhere. You know, books are so much everywhere. And I agree that there are books everywhere, but I disagree that that means everybody could get them. And what I mean by this is, up until, I would say, the early 90s, books and magazines and comic books, all of these things were available anywhere. And most of the places they were available, they were available as impulse buys, okay? And they were available very cheaply. So you could go to a grocery store, and if you're a kid going to the grocery store, being dragged there after school with your mom, and you're like, uh, not wanting to be there, and you're throwing a little temper tantrum, and then you get up to the checkout, and there's a spinner rack of a bunch of bright, colorful Spider-Man and Superman and Batman and comic books and shit like that. 
you're going to want those things because it's the only thing that has looked interesting for the last hour and a half. And you're like, oh my God, I want this, I want this, mommy, 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 mommy. And you just do the thing that the kids do and the kids fucking go, please, 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 I'll be good. Ugh. And then the mom says, how much is that? And then you say like a quarter, 50 cents, whatever. And mom's like, if it'll shut you up, it's worth 50 cents. That's how reading starts. That's how you get kids to read stuff. Because now, this was a kid's decision to grab that book. Okay? The kid fought for it. The kid won. And now the kid has something to do on the car ride home. Okay? But we don't have that anymore. The direct market has completely fucking killed any like access for like young kids to get into comic books comic book fucking sales have tanked over the last 30 years now they might not look as bad but that's because comic books now cost like five to eight dollars an issue five five to eight bucks for like anywhere from 20 to 40 pages of shit art and bad story that's that's a whole other topic for a different day okay but drug stores and shit they used to have um like little spinner racks of cheap paperbacks um the newsstand used to be full of like books and stories with salacious covers and salacious titles to interest people to like someone walking by and they see it and they're like oh it's funny that the only the only market that is continually doing something like that are fucking romance novels. They're like, oh, let's give the women what they want on the cover. And so they do the fucking thing and the books sell, you know? But they still haven't figured that out for, like, selling books to everyone else who doesn't want to read a romance novel. And if you think about it and you're like, oh, well, you know, you could still get books at Walmart. And if I go to the grocery store, there's still a book section. Okay, if you're older than 12 and you're watching this, Think back. How big did that section used to be and how big is it now? What kind of books could you get there before and what kind of books can you get there now? Moving things away from normal places where normal people go is the thing that is causing all this shit. When you can't get something like just on a, oh, oh, oh I'll grab that. And now like mass market paperbacks are almost 10 bucks. The cost of living slash inflation do not match up the way they did. Somebody is fucking something up here. Do you see what I'm saying? When the price of a book is not disposable income and just like ridiculous income, those things are pushed to the side. Those things are pushed to the back burner. And the reason why I bring up comic books and the reason why I bring up pulps and just like kind of trashy books is because that is how you get the working class people the low to mid income people into reading you have to give them something that interests them that they're curious about and most literature um contemporary lit is up its own ass and nobody fucking cares except the people who could afford to go to barnes and noble or order off amazon the day it comes out a fucking $30 fucking hardcover. Those are the people who are basically caring about the books that are coming out right now. But comic books, trashy magazines, trashy mass market paperbacks, these are the gateway drugs. If you take that away from kids and you take that away from people, and again, like a lot of what I'm saying here is also going into Mark's video about the um, books versus cigarettes um, discussion. So I'm kind of all over the place there. Criminally made a really good point about kids reading things that aren't books. Kids are, like, like my kid. And this is the thing that's funny. Like, Josh has tiny kids. Ollie has teenage kids. And I have um, an adult kid. And, like... Brian has older kids, okay? And it's funny to see, like, the progression. Because you could see how 
if you watch everyone's video, like you could hear people talk about stuff and it, it, it's just funny. But like my kid liked to read certain books. Like my kid liked Captain Underpants. My kid liked um, Circa de Freak. And then um, when my kid started getting into YouTube, my kid started to like um, YouTuber biographies or autobiographies or memoirs, which is just absolutely fucking crazy. But you know, like to each his own, everyone's into something. But the other thing my kid does is play video games that are like text-based like story games and they're reading a lot there they're reading a lot when they're on social media and they're seeing all these things they're, they're reading like if you're on like twitter and you're on twitter all day you're reading all fucking day because people are tweeting and you're reading their tweets I think the problem here is, is that a lot of people, and um, I think this is kind of where The Guardian was, like, at least is what the question sounded like, is that, like, books aren't the future. Like, there is going to come a day when people with tons of books on their shelves is not going to be, like, a reality. Like, it's just like, what the fuck are you wasting all this space for? Like, what is this? But are we in a library, an antique? A library will probably end up being a vending machine. And it's not even going to give you anything other than like a QR code or something. So, hooray for the future, right? But if the publishing industry and the distribution industry doesn't figure this out before people stop caring altogether, this is all gone within the next... I would say within the next hundred years, but also I didn't think 20 years ago that the internet would have fucking done as much damage and good stuff that it has done. So who fucking knows? Maybe in 10 years, like books are like just not a thing anymore. No idea. But the, the Barnes and Noble experience, I think has done a lot to damage how everyday people get books because they have turned something that was like a spontaneous like oh i'll check that out into it now you have to come inside the store where we are just selling books and if people are busy and all this other shit they don't have time for that they have to fucking go they just got off work they picked up their kids they got to go to the grocery store buy some fucking shit to fucking cook up for dinner get home, cook the food, put the kids to bed, yell at somebody, um, pick up dog shit, I don't know, like whatever fucking people do. But when you take away that quick accessibility and the, um, the spinner rack mentality that the fucking National Enquirer still has been able to fucking figure out, you got to keep shit up at the front of the store, you got to keep shit cheap. And you got to keep it to where when the people are trapped in a fucking line, they have nothing else to do other than to talk themselves into buying a book. It's not fucking rocket science. Like, this is very easy shit here. So, kids are reading. We just don't like what they're reading. Everyone needs to get the fuck off everybody's kids here. Like, kids are fine. They know how to read. My kid reads extremely well. Probably better than I do. So let me know what you think down below, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video, and if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.